Hi, it's Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a flip through of my latest altered book. I am so happy. A book like this has weeks and weeks of work in it, and when I finish one, I feel towards it like other people do towards Christmas. It just gives me so much joy. Today we're going to have a look at it, but first I am working on a YouTube video about altered books and altered bookmaking. It's just going to be Q's and A's, and I would like it if you would let me know in the comments below what questions you have about making altered books. And then I can add it to the list of things to talk about. So it doesn't matter. Anything you want to know, please let me know. This is an old book. It's from 1915. You see, it's the Good Samaritan. And it was a book of children's Bible stories that was given as a, a Sunday school present. And back in the day, that was a big thing giving books as Sunday school presents for good attendance or uh, paying attention. And uh, especially if you lived in poorer areas, getting one of these books was uh, a huge treat because maybe you didn't have a lot of books or stuff. So this would have been very special to somebody. As such, I got to admit, it's a little bit grubby. And you know what? I kind of like that. To me, it's meaningful that whoever had this book read it, carried it around, maybe slept with it, uh, just read it so much that it got good and messy. So to me, that's, that's part of the story. There was a picture here of the Good Samaritan, but I took it away and added instead some handwritten text. And on top of that is an oversized Redoute Camellia. If you like Redoute flowers like this, I have some free downloads on my website, and there's a link to that in the text below this video, so go get them. This is my first layout. This, uh, these, these cathedrals and spires are from 1888. They're from a book called The Girl's Own Paper. And it's a lot of look, this engraving. So I wanted to add something to give it some interest and whimsy. And I had this oversized angel or Madonna from a book, a black and white book of uh, art, coffee table book of art prints. And she really just anchored this perfectly, which meant something else needed to go over here. And I have this tiny little black and white bird. He's from 1912. It was a textbook of uh, nature. And I like the way that they're engaging with each other. It's telling a story, uh, which I like a collage to do. What that story is, you got to tell me. This is a messy page and I am so happy with it. What I did was this is the original oversized text for the storybook. And over here I added a, a page, just glued down a page of vintage French text. And uh, that just makes this really subtle contrast that the eye almost doesn't register. Two different text sizes, parchment colors. And to that I added something to anchor both sides here. And I found this book of lettering in the thrift store. And so I took this page, rough toward on the diagonal, put one here and one here. And then that again, this makes, instead of having page, page, now we have one canvas. And that's what this does. It kind of bookends it. She is also from the girl's own paper and that's 1888 added some hand tinting here to make her, her gown really pop. He's from a more contemporary coffee table book of birds. And I was very happy to find an owl that had a little bit of dusty blue to pick up the color there in the, the lilies. 
water lilies. And then throughout, I've done some mark making with glue. This layout took me days before I even started embellishing. There's a lot going on. I added a little banner here going across both sides again to draw the eye across. This is also from the girl's own paper. And originally what was here were some poems in these boxes and they weren't very good. They were pretty unintentionally hilarious, but not good. So I very carefully cut out around the poems and that left these little, these little holes. And in them, on this side, I put a little fragment of a nature dictionary and I added this guy and she is just taking it all in. I had meant to stop with just that, but then there was this big empty piece here. So I decided to pick up on this element and I found in my butterfly box some, some moths that are similar to the, the patterns in the tinting that I added to these moths. And I'd like to think that they escaped the page and now they're going off. Who wouldn't sit and take that in? Uh, okay, a lot going on here as well. I love old cathedrals and engravings. What I did here was glued this down and then I went over all of the major lines with charcoal and I blended that. So it makes it look a little bit more painterly and abstract and uh, really leans into the, the mystery of it. Now over here, I needed something, that's a lot of look, and I really needed something to uh, balance that and play well with that. And I have a stencil of a floor plan of a church. Yes, yes I do. So I used a black ink pad to create a relief here. Um, again, I'm not sure that the eye is really going floor plan, cathedral, cathedral. I think it's more subtle than that, but that the eye is making the connection that helps this whole layout hold together. As does a lot of yellow. I don't know about you, but I needed a lot of yellow this spring. This is another Redoute flower, and he's just, he's just flying into the cathedral as oversized yellow birds do. This is a pocket. It's, I've made it by gluing these two pages together. And inside is a cabinet card. This is one of my favorite ones that I have, and I have a lot. She's uh, just got this little bunting here and uh, pleats and curls, and she's just charming. Over here, I put down some handwritten French text. This is from a legal document called a notaire, and that is 1848. I've had this engraving for yonks, but I don't usually work in a format this big, so I've been waiting to have something it fit in, and I just, uh, I love it. Everything, the lute, her expression. Oh, there's just a Cupid reading some books hanging out. Over here, these are not original old pieces. They're from coffee table books, but uh, I've just made a little collage story that I thought balances this. Bye. The final layout is Another page from the girl's own paper, and I've added some hand tinting here to offset just some of the, the relentless grayscale. I rough tore it and glued it down 
over a background of some Welsh text. This is from 1811. And I live in Wales, so I occasionally can find some charming old Welsh text. Again, I've added just a little bit of extra color to her. She already had a blue tint to her, and I like the way this guy is uh, adding some movement. Finally, we have the little grubby background page. Uh, like I said, I think that's kind of charming, but I decided to add a little bit of lean into the distressed part by rough tearing a hand written ledger page. That's from 1889. Rough tore it, blended up the edges and added these guys. And I kind of think they're saying, Hey, Hey, what's in the book? Open that up. We open that up. I want to see what's in there or maybe not. If you like altered books, I would really be grateful if you subscribe to my monthly online newsletter and you can do that in the link below. It has book arts, journal arts, free downloads, giveaways, good stuff. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post every Friday. And again, if you have any questions about this book or other altered book questions, please let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. I love to compare notes. Finally, if you would like to see bigger still photos of these layouts, get some ideas and inspiration, or even buy it, it's on my website, and the link to that is below as well. There. Now, get up and go make something. <laughs>